Are you satisfied in your job? Does it fulfill your psychological expectations? And what in your mind are the most fundamental elements that constitute psychological happiness in the workplace? Well, to discuss, I am joined by Pepile Simalani, who is a business strategist and also director of True North. Welcome to Leading Opinion. It's great to have you on the show today. Thank you very much for having me. Tell us about True North. What do you do? Yeah, well, True North is a business consultancy and we work with organizations, leaders in those organizations and the individuals within those organizations to help them, say, find their true north. Um, and really what that means is that we work with the organization, the leaders and the individuals basically to enable them to perform optimally. Okay, very interesting. Yeah. Now, you wrote this article about psychological contracts. Yes. How do you define a psychological contract and how is that different from the standard contract of employment? Well, psychological contracts are actually quite interesting in that they're actually just in the mind. Um, but even though they're in the mind, they're quite important. So what is it really? It's the employee's expectation of the reciprocal um, obligations that exist between an organization and of course themselves. So basically what um, I think or by believe I can expect in an organization when I join it. And why is that so important when it comes to productivity and fulfilling the organization's goals? Well, it's actually quite important. I mean, we speak of employee engagement. And employee engagement being that heightened emotional um, and call it cognitive connection that an employee has with you know, his or her company that makes them give that extra discretionary effort. Mm -hmm. Now, what we're striving for is we want highly engaged employees because obviously highly engaged employees perform and outperform mm -hmm. um, those that are disengaged or not as engaged. Um, so when organizations strive for that, they need to understand that they are working with people who have expectations of what they're going to get within mm -hmm. that organization. So when we competing for talent um, in the market uh, we need to be well aware that we need to be meeting those expectations so that we can retain um, those employees. It sounds great in theory but I'm sure it can be quite challenging if we have to look at the mining sector the prolonged strikes that took place in the platinum sector this year that in terms of what you've just told me uh. will put psychological contracts into perspective and also expectations where employees have a set of expectations that from the employer's perspective cannot be met realistically and we saw what happened in that sector and how it brought the economy to its knees as well. No, absolutely and I think the first point that I'd like to make is that employers need to be aware that psychological contracts exist and we as employers often create these expectations by the way in which we engage our employees mm -hmm. in fact we talk about employer brands we, we we go out there and we say you know if you so want you're to, selling your concept you and you're your creating con expectations which could be disastrous absolutely which could be disastrous if they're not met uh, within the organization and often we don't take in enough time to understand what expectations we're creating out there in, mm -hmm. in the marketplace or in the minds of the employee. So take the mining sector, um, for example. Um, what I would say there is that uh, the, the biggest component of what I spoke about in terms of engagement, which is communication, was a complete breakdown. So people were sitting in their sort of silos, as in you know the unions or employees and the employer on one side, all thinking different things all with different expectations but communication helps to bring those expectations to the fore and clearly in the mining sector the communication breakdown was actually you know caused. very disastrous and to take this that is, example yeah, further as well I think the lesson that that came out of that is the question is that many people are asking is how seriously should we look into the expectations of employees that should be employed merely based on a formal contract of employment to deliver what was promised what was offered to them when they got a job because what we are seeing is mining companies downsizing and cutting jobs so this has opened up a huge debate in South Africa in the space of trade unions and psychological contracts as you would call it. No, absolutely I mean think about any um, 
working relationship as exactly what the word says, a relationship, you know. Sure. So, you know, even if you were in a marriage, not everything that's written down in your marriage contract yes. is what you expect. You have a whole lot of other expectations when you go into that relationship that are often not articulated um, into the contract, but they have been implied in the way we've engaged. Sure. They've been implied in the experiences that we've had together. So I can expect certain things because of the way we've sort of engaged and interacted, mm -hmm. and it might not be written down on paper. And it's the same thing. And I guess the lesson here is that relationships need to be built on trust. And sure. it's the exact same thing with the employer-employee relationship. What advice it's would the you trust. give? Sure. What advice would you give to one of your clients who is an employer, a representative of an, of an organization when it comes to creating expectations when engaging with employees? Yeah, I'd say firstly, there's nothing wrong with creating expectations. You are competing um, in a marketplace for skills. The difficulty is, can you meet those expectations? So don't make promises you can't keep um, is the first one. Um, the other important thing is that the custodian of the employee-employer relationship in an organization is often the line manager. And the role of the line manager is often so underplayed, um, in fact, that they, we talk about HR is responsible for that. But actually, if you think about an employee coming into the organization, who's the person they're going to experience mm -hmm. the most? Who's the person who actually determines um, you know, their work-life experience? And that person often is the line manager. We talk about employees don't leave companies, they leave their managers. Mm -hmm. um, and the role of the manager is, is, or line manager is often so underplayed. Um, and I would advise organizations to spend a lot of effort um, and investment working with line managers in aligning what they promise, so the expectations they create intentionally or otherwise, um, with the experience that needs to be delivered within the organization. Okay, now each individual comes with a, with a set of values, mm -hmm. with a complex set of motivation. Yeah. So the challenge there would be to really understand the individual psyche. Absolutely, and it's the same with any relationship. You get to know a person, but you know, we present our best person or best foot forward when we are wooing um, yes. somebody. I see a lot, a lot of merit yeah. in where you're coming from yeah. in terms of understanding the individual psyche, and I can see that really contributing to productivity in small organizations. But again, if you're a large organization and you have 50 line managers and you have 50,000 employees, then it really becomes a cost issue to really invest in going into the human psyche of an individual employee? Um, I would say actually think about the cost of not doing that. Uh, and often the cost of not doing that is so much higher. I mean, research has been done. Organizations that engage employees, organizations that have highly engaged employees outperform the rest. They completely outperform the rest. So um, it stops being about you know, the warm and fuzzy, as we often sure. think about it. Um, it being so warm and fuzzy, and it's about, oh, I must get into your head. No, it's actually a business decision. It's actually a strategic decision. Sure. And it's actually about getting a competitive advantage, um, you know, over your competitors. And, and I mean, we talk about uh, people being the last standing competitive advantage because everything mm -hmm. else can be copied. Mm -hmm. We can copy your systems. We can copy your processes. We can even copy your strategy. Yeah. yeah, but the work that you do in your people, that's very difficult to Look, copy. In I'm an adherent of what you're work. talking about in terms of the psychological well-being of a person in a job. So mm -hmm. I really understand where you're coming from with that. Yeah. In South Africa, do you think that there is more of an awareness coming through from organizations that looks into industrial psychology and how it should be implemented in the workplace to improve productivity and also to improve the quality of life for the individual employee as they spend 80% of their life working. Absolutely. Um, I work with a lot of uh, uh, organizations. So a lot of organizations I work with are actually quite large um, organizations. So with the 25,000 employees, with the 50,000 employees. And I'm finding that leaders um, in organizations are starting to accept and acknowledge that their competi a competitive advantage is going to come from their people or does come from their people. And a lot of work is going into employee engagement. 
mind. But of course, it's a complex thing. Mm -hmm. um, and shifting the mindsets from this being such a warm HRE thing to it being a strategic thing um, is a leap that uh, uh, we haven't quite uh, uh, gotten there yet. And of course, but unemployment we is very there. high as well. Absolutely. And so it, I would assume that it takes a bit of a backseat when it comes to, you know, if you look at the unemployment rate and you look at business objectives as well. No, absolutely. But I mean, if you think of our, uh, our country and uh, are competing for critical skills, uh, we talk about the skill shortage. Um, and if you're looking for the, 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 the talent uh, that will take your organization to the next level, these are people who um, have got options. Uh, and it's about, well, how do you compete effectively to keep them? And how do you compete effectively to get them to perform optimally? Sure. Well, yeah. it was insightful talking to you. Thank you so much for your time. We wish you all the luck in shifting perceptions. Quite a challenge. Yeah. Great to have you on the show. <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate it.